Good morning, everyone. My name is Richard Merritt. I'm the owner of New Hampshire Hostess. And this segment is to explain to you how to uh, control the damage of voles and mice, but primarily voles in your garden. Now, I'm here in New England and I have a certain species of vole and, a cert and two species of mice. Um, but whether you're in southern Alaska, uh, northern Maine, uh, down south in Georgia or northern Florida, it doesn't matter. Um, you may have a different species of vole, a different species of mouse, uh, but they are all related. The vole is actually in the mouse family, but is distinctly different, and I'll try to explain that to you. And they're doing the same damage. So what I'm going to offer you today is an organic way to control the damage that they do in your garden, because um, they love hostas, unfortunately. They love them as much as we do. And so um, there is an organic treatment um, that I'm going to explain. Um, it's not just how it works, but how to apply it so that it works. Because if you don't use it properly, it isn't going to work. Um, I've learned from my own experience of talking to my customers that um, it doesn't work if you don't do it properly. And so I've pieced it all together in my mind and I'm going to try to convey that to you today. Um, if I sound a little hoarse, I'm sorry. I just came back from a, a trip to Ireland, and I picked up a pesky cold virus, um, which I'm just getting over. Um, I've managed to spread it to other people around me, including the cameraman, PJ, filming. And, uh, but if you haven't been to Ireland, I highly recommend it. I experienced Irish hospitality from the north, the south, the east, and the west and I just loved it. I had a wonderful tour guide and she was just full of knowledge and uh, I, can, I can't uh, overemphasize how, uh, how much I enjoyed it. And so if you get the chance to go, you should go. All right, so back to the, the task at hand and that is vole control in your garden. Um, and this is, obviously we're talking hostas, but it applies to any part of your garden. Um, Two years ago, we had some of the worst damage here that we'd ever had. Uh, besides eating my crop of tens of thousands of hostas, they destroyed an English ivy bed um, that I'd had for over 20 years, a sedum bed, and I'm going to show you pictures of these as they look now because they have recovered. For those of you who are impatient and you, you're not going to listen to this video because it is going to be fairly long, uh, you can go to the website and see the formula and the instructions on paper. And um, also, if you, know, if you don't have it in your head from the video, that's a good place to go and, and reference back to. So hopefully there'll be concise, accurate instructions um, explaining. Uh, but for those of you who want to look at my ugly mug for 10 minutes or so, I'm going to uh, explain it in, in detail. And I'm going to try to segue into um, why it's important to use an organic control when you can, and in this case, you certainly can, uh, so that you're not uh, destroying the environment and the ecology around you. So the formula has been around for a long time, and that's why I know a lot of you are going to think you're going to poo-poo me because it's been out there for a long time. And it isn't the, it, the problem is not with the formula or the mixing. The problem that people are having is the application. And I can explain to you why that problem is happening, but first let's, let's talk about um, how to mix it. It's basically 50% uh, common dish soap that you would have at your sink. And then 50% castor oil. Uh, now the castor oil, uh, because we have such a large uh, garden and, and business here, I went online and I Googled it and I bought a, um, a gallon from a company in the West Coast. If you, knew, if you really think you need that much, you can do that too, but you, that's a decision you have to make. I think a gallon was only $30 plus shipping from, from the West Coast. And that's all I used. If you, if you um, look on in your garden center, and we have a product here, um, the active ingredient is always castor oil. And those products, they're trying to get the bowl on the mouse to eat the, the product, ingest the castor oil, and then they say that um, 
it gives them diarrhea and they die. Well, that may be, but you don't have to do it that way necessarily. And there again, there's nothing wrong with that product. If you only have a, a postage stamp garden, that's probably fine for you. That's actually easier for you. And you, sh you all have to adapt what's best for your situation. But here we have acres of um, hosta and gardens and we have to cover a lot of ground and we have a lot of voles. Uh, we're surrounded by woods, as you can hear the woodpecker um, calling up above. Um, and behind me, we have swamp and water and they, they're not adverse to water, they love it. And we're surrounded on uh, three sides by voles, actually four. I actually have them along our road frontage as well. Um, what we did here is we mixed it 50-50 and then we put it through an injector system. Because we have commercial greenhouses, uh, we have injectors um, for putting in fertilizers or, or pesticides into our water as needed. And so that was the easy way for me. I can just run enough hose to any corner of our gardens and, uh, and we were able to cover it that way. Um, some of you might want to mix the formula in a watering can, uh, and that's fine too. That, that's easy. Uh, and you don't have to worry about too much about the exact amount. Uh, I would go 50-50 or equal parts castor oil and soap, but don't worry too much. I'm going to tell you uh, some guidelines, but it's, I don't think it's that critical. As long as you get enough uh, castor oil on, it will work. This may work for a lot of gardeners, especially those of you who have a thousand varieties of hosta in your garden or a thousand cultivars. Um, I went out to a couple of local garden centers and I spoke to them because I don't use these, but I, I knew in the past that they were troublesome. Um, they are not anymore. This, this is a, like a type of uh, on-hose product where you, you would you take this bottle apart, uh, put your 50-50 mix in there, turn it back on, put it on your hose, and this one has a dial on the top. This one happens to be made by uh, bone-eyed. All right, so let's, let's move on to the critical part of, of when you apply it. We've, we've talked about the mixing, and you can, you'll see this repeated in the, the written instructions. But the critical part is how you apply it. And this is why so many people used it, and they say, oh, it didn't work for me. They, they didn't touch this plant. I couldn't have asked for a better audience, folks. That's the pileated woodpecker uh, in the lot right next door, and he was going to be in the segment. I had no idea he'd show up for us. Uh, so the critical part is where you apply it, because what we found when we did this, and we had 100% success, we did not lose a hosta either from our crop or in the garden. We did not lose uh, so much as a leaf of English ivy or a leaf of sedum. And it carried all the way through the garden. But what they did do is they destroyed our lawns. <laughs> and by destroyed, I mean they tunneled through it, they ate it, they chewed it, so that when the snow receded in the spring, our gardens were completely clean and free of damage, but our lawns were, had been decimated. Now, if anybody, as you know with a lawn, <laughs> thank you. All you have to do is, uh, with a lawn, in our case, we did nothing. Our lawns are very organic and healthy, and so all we did was rake them. I'm not even sure we did that to all the lawns, but they all came back 100%. It, it didn't hurt them a bit. Now timing, um, I know some of you have voles actually eating during the season, and you could probably treat it with a watering can. That I'm not sure. We don't have that problem. They do not eat our plants, by and large, um, during the growing season. They are eating the lawn. They actually prefer a good lawn. Um, and I read an article years ago that there's a, um, a hormone or something in the grass that actually triggers them. When the grass is green and they start eating it in the spring, that triggers the reproductive system to tell them, okay, the food supply is there, let's start eating. So they actually do prefer grass in large part 
Um, and if you have lawns, that's probably what they're eating. But they're probably hiding in your perennial beds for cover. And, and that's another thing is uh, when you, uh, if you keep your beds fairly clean, and by clean I mean free of weeds, um, so that there's no cover for them. So once you've, once you've got your castor oil uh, mixture made, whether you're putting it in on a watering can um, through a hose application type product where the water's coming through the hose, or in my case, I inject it, 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 it doesn't matter. Um, the timing is critical. And I'm primarily talking about protecting your plants during the winter from the vole and mice damage. Um, this same product will also uh, deter the moles with an M, M-O-L-E-S, versus vole with a V, V-O-L-E-S. The uh, mole is a carnivore. <clears throat> they are eating insects, worms, grubs. The vole is primarily a herbivore, but I believe they will eat other things, so they might actually be classified as an omnivore in that they're eating uh, animal material to a small degree. Uh, but the, the critical point is um, put it on before the, before the ground freezes so that it can, it can permeate into the uh, topsoil and any uh, plant matter that may be there, even, if you, even into your mulch. If it, it permeates into your mulch, it stays on your mulch. And we have our mulch, gardens mulched here. Um, I think that's the perfect uh, time to do it. Um, you don't want to wait till after your garden freezes because you're not going to be able to get it into the, the mulch or, or lawn or whatever you're treating. Uh, it's going to stay on top and um, it may be more vulnerable to washing away and puddling. So I think the ideal time is after you've had some frost, your gardens are um, collapsed. Now you can see this, we're mid-September here and we haven't had our first frost here, but it's not too far away. Once we get a frost on this garden, all of this will begin to brown and collapse. And whether you clean it off or you leave it, I advise cleaning it off because uh, it takes away the protection for the vole and you'll be better able to uh, get your vole control in there, which is the castor oil. Um, once this goes, um, we will just come in and spray it, and, but we'll be spraying the whole property, our entire crop, obviously. So at this point, I want to segue into why you should be using the castor oil, and there again, if those of you who don't want to listen to this, you don't have to, I've, I've talked about the application and why you have to do um, everything that you want to protect because if you don't, if you spray it over here, you apply it over here, they're just going to go over here and eat. That's the whole point. So from an ecological and from an environmental point of view, it's far better that you just deter the vole from eating your plant. You can't protect the entire world. The, from voles. The vole is an integral part of our ecosystem in that it is the bottom of the, the food chain for so many of the uh, animals that around us, like the, the uh, hawks, the owls, the foxes, the coyotes. Um, I don't know if there's any felines in there or not, but your, even your house cat. Uh, uh, they're all going to be eating them. And that's why the vole has to multiply in such large numbers. It has so many, and that's just the way the food chain works. And, and that's, you don't want to disrupt it. You just want to uh, protect your portion of it, which is your garden, and not disrupt um, it. Because don't we all want to hear the pileated woodpecker in the background, and we wouldn't want to do anything that would poison something as precious as a pileated woodpecker. Uh, so when you use a, when you use a uh, poison, like a rat poison, and there's a, there's a myriad uh, of them. I'm not going to try to name them all. There's no point. But if it's a chemical uh, on the ingredient and active, and they're warning you that you have to do this to protect your pets and, and that to protect your children, 
don't use it. Not, certainly not for voles. There's no need to. Castor oil is here. I've explained to you how it works. I've explained to you, for those of you who've used it and it didn't work, I've, I've explained to you why it didn't work. And so you just, with that knowledge, you just use it um, in a way that works for you and yet it's going to be harmless to the environment because those voles are actually going to live. They're just going to go someplace else to eat, eat their food and they're going to be around for the, the hawks, the owls, the, the foxes, and et cetera, et cetera, to eat. And the hawks, the owls, they won't be affected. Whereas if you put out a poison and the vole or the mouse takes the poison, then if a, if a owl comes along or a, a coyote or whatever, a fox, and they eat enough of those uh, voles, their, their uh, life is going to be in danger. And, you're, and so you're disrupting the, the food chain, the natural environment around us, the ecological uh, health is being affected. So uh, I was going to talk, and I was going to segue into uh, this and talk about the pileated woodpecker. Not that the pileated woodpecker is eating voles or mice, he's eating insects, uh, but I hadn't seen one since I was about 21 and I walked off my back porch uh, last week and I heard the, the, the pecking and I looked up and about 50 feet away from me, um, about 20 feet off the ground in a big white pine that had died and was now full of, is now full of carpenter ants, there was the pileated woodpecker um, eating away, gorging himself on carpenter ants. Now, why am I telling you this? Uh, partly, I'm thrilled that I saw the pileated woodpecker, but, <laughs> and there he is. But partly, um, I, I'm telling you because when you use a, a slug control that's poisonous, or when you use a vole control that's poisonous, and not a natural, harmless one that only affects what you're trying to deter, in this case, the vole, in the other case, the slug. You're affecting the ecosystem around you, and that's what you have to understand, and you don't have to go into deep depth. But in this case, there's an easy, organic way, and so you're not going to infect the environment around you, and uh, you can enjoy the best of both worlds. You can have your garden, and you can listen and view occasionally, although they're very hard to view, uh, you can view the, the pileated woodpecker. So I hope I've made my point. Um, I'm going to let you go. Everybody's dismissed. Um, if you want to uh, review that recipe, and I hope you do because it really does work, um, it's online on the website under Vol Control. And, uh, and thank you for listening and uh, happy gardening.